day once again. This is missionary Mike Abeto, missionary in Kenya, East Africa, and right now I'm here in the Philippines. And this is the fourth part of our Bible study about what the Bible says about the Bible. And now we're going to discuss about the preservation of the Word of God. Did God really kept His promise? Now, in this study, you will learn a lot of things and I'm going to divide this lesson in several parts again. And probably this video will help you a lot in growing in the words of God and knowing about the King James Bible. So, let's get started. Now, I want you to open your Bible, please, in the book of Psalms, chapter number 12. Psalms, chapter number 12, verses number 6 to verse number 7. Here's what the Bible says. The words of the Lord are pure words, a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse number 7, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, God made a promise that He's going to preserve His words. And I don't mean the King James Bible. I mean God. Did he kept his promise of preserving his words? Because he said in uh, chapter number 12 of the book of Psalms, verse number 7, Thou shalt keep them. It is the Lord himself who will keep his own words. Alright? O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The word forever means eternity. So the question is, did God really kept his promise? If God didn't keep his promise, then we don't have the word of God. But if God kept His promise, therefore, we can conclude that we have the very words of God preserved throughout the generation. Hi, once again. So now, uh, we're going to discuss about that. Now, many people, they said that all Bible versions are the same. Now, let me just tell you honestly, here I have some Bible versions like the NIV, New International Versions. Because why versions? Because it has four different types of version. 1973, 1978, 2008, 2011, and I think they have a new one. And Good News Bible. You know why it's called Good News? Because they remove hell. They want to get rid of hell. That's why they remove the, the word hell. It became a good news for them. So it sounds uh, interesting for Pentecostals. And another one we have the Living Bible, the Living Bible, and unfortunately, I have 10 different Bible versions. I left them in Kenya. That includes the New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, they, they claim that all Bible versions are the same. But the question is that, are they the same? Now, in this study, you will learn that all Bible versions are not the same. Now, I'm going to post right here a picture of all Bible version, English Bible versions right there. That photo. So I want you to take a look at this photo and then you, you will learn that so many Bible versions are ex existing in our uh, Christian libraries right now. Now in this video, you will learn that all Bible versions are not the same. So uh, uh, one of the preachers, he said that two different a statement cannot both be the same if they are different they then they're not the same and if they are the same then they are not different so simple as that now many Bible versions they don't agree with each other and of course I will just show you some of the examples and as we go deeper in this Bible study and I will show you more if you're going to follow this video now in Proverbs chapter 30 verse number 28 this is the reading of the King James Bible Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 28, the spider, you see the word spider in that photo? Take it hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. Now, in ASB 1901, American Standard Version, look at that. Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 28, the lizard, take it hold with her hands, yet is she in king's palaces. Now, with also dealing with the Diglots Bible, the Tagalog Bible used by many Filipinos here in the Philippines. Uh, this is a parallel with the King James Bible. When you look at that in, in Diglot, the reading would be uh, butike. Instead, using the word spider, butike 
is a Tagalog word of lizard. So they are not the same. Another example is that go with uh, go with me please in the book of Genesis chapter number 6 verse number 14. Now in this photo, look at this photo very carefully. Genesis chapter 6 verse number 14. Here's what the Bible says. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. You see the word ark is there. In contemporary English version or CEV, in this photo, you will see that Genesis 6.14, get some good lumber and build a boat. So what's the differences between ark and a boat? It's up to you to, to, to decide. Another verse, now this is the this photo, New King James Version, uh, versus King James Bible. They said that, oh, King James Bible, we have a new version of the King James Bible, which is a very uh, clear and easy to understand King James Bible. And they said that's the new King James Version. But wait, look at this. Go with me please in Proverbs chapter number 25, verse number 23. The north wind driveth away rain. Look at this underlined red color letters. So that an angry countenance of a biting tongue. Now look at this in the New King James Version. It says, the north wind brings forth rain. Now, here's the contradiction. In the King James Bible, the, the King James Bible will tell you that the north wind driveth away rain. It pushes away something that it pushes away the rain. But in the New King James Version, it says, the north wind brings forth rain. So, can you tell me that they are the same? No, they are not. They didn't agree and they didn't much. You see that? So, in these passages that we read, we can make an assumption that these Bible versions are not the same. They are totally different from each other. Now, another verse, go with me. In Mark chapter number 1, verse number 41, look at this photo. Mark chapter 1, verse number 41, and Jesus moved with compassion. We all know what's the meaning of compassion. That's why we have the Good Samaritan. He was moved with compassion. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, he was moved with compassion. Compassion means you are helping someone out of love. You are loving someone out of love. That's the meaning of compassion. So that means compassion means it is a positive word. It is a passive, positive word. Now look at the NIV. NIV, New International Version. It says Mark 1.41 And Jesus moved with indignant What is indignant brother Mike? The funny thing is that We have four different NIVs The 1978 says indignant The 1973 says compassion They contradict with each other What's the meaning of indignant? Indignant means you are so much angry Fierceness That's why the Jesus of NIV is not the Jesus of the King James Bible with Jesus of compassion and the other Jesus is filled with indignant. So, these uh, examples that we saw are sufficient to prove our claim that all Bible versions are not the same. They are not. Even your pastor will tell you that, oh, they are just the same. Even your preacher, your professor will say they are just the same. No, it's not. From the perspective that we saw, that we examined in just four, I think, four examples, it, suffi it suffice us that they are not the same. Now, I have hundreds of verses to prove to show to you that all these Bible verses, they don't agree even to, to each other. Remove the King James Bible. Now, the issue is this. The issue is not about the King James Bible, which one is preserved and which one is not. Because it would sound like bias when we say, why we use the King James Bible? Because this is the word of, words of God preserved. But that's not the case. That's not the issue. But of course, for us Bible believers, we all know that the King James Bible is the very words of God. But in this study, we will not put emphasis on the King James Bible. We will put emphasis on what is the real issue. The real issue is the battle for the word of God. Now, the question, let's go back to the question. Did God really keep his promise? Now, let me just read some of the passage. In Psalm chapter number 12, 
verses 6 to 7. We have read this before. The words of the Lord are pure words, a silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And the other verse, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. First Peter chapter 1, verse number 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Simple as that. And But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. First Peter chapter number 1, verse number 25, and Psalm chapter 119, verse 140, thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Another verse, the Lord gave the word, Great was the company of those that published it. Psalm chapter 68, verse number 11. And John 17, 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. You see that? That's why we have the issues of Bible version, because the world hath hated the words of God. Let's continue. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Another verse, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we can conclude that, the word of God is here. The word of God is here. Why? Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how could we get that faith if we don't have the words of God? Forever, O Lord, thy word is set out in heaven. Psalms 119, verse 89. Now, in this issue, we were going to talk about in Genesis chapter number 3. The issue is not the divinity of Jesus Christ. The issue is not the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. No, those kind of things are the result of this issue. All false doctrines, all wrong doctrines are primarily based in this issue. So that means if we can settle this issue, we can settle the following arguments like the false doctrines, that uh, issue about Trinity and those kind of things. Now we have the attack. In Matthew chapter 24, verse number 35 this is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself so that means the Lord had made a promise that he's going to preserve his own words not our words the issue is not which one all right the issue is did God really kept his promise now in this whiteboard at on my back we will discuss about What's the real issue? What's the real issue? Now, in my back, as you can see, this is the story of Adam and Eve, what happened in the book of Genesis chapter number 3. We have Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 16. Let me just read. The Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Now in chapter 3, that's the story of the conversation of the devil, which is the serpent, and Eve. And what happened to them? We all know the story. Now let me just proceed. Now the original statement is God's statements. In Genesis chapter number 2, verses 6 to 7, God's statement in chapter number 2, verse 16, is that freely eat. You may freely eat, but accept. We all know what's that except exception. That's the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And another statement of God in verse number 17 is, Thou shalt surely die. Surely. 100%. Now, in Satan's revision, as you can see right here, in Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 1, Yea, hath God said, Satan, or the serpent, questioned the word of God. Don't you know, the first question mark, in the Bible appeared first in Genesis chapter number 3 verse number 1 and it was used by the serpent, serpent himself. You see that? Now, here's Satan's revision of the Lord, the Lord God in chapter number 2 verse number 17. Instead of saying, surely die, you know what he said? Ye shall not, addition, surely die. The serpent added the word not from the word surely die you see that surely not surely die surely die you see that that's the business of the serpent that's the business of satan to add something in the word of god now i want you to look at this very carefully Eve's 
alteration. This is Eve, the woman. In Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 2, the woman omitted the word freely eat. I want you to study this with you. In Genesis chapter 3, verse number 2, it reads like this. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Instead of saying the word freely, she removed the word freely. Now another statement is that, this is the statement about death. Alright? The devil said, not surely die. God said, surely die. And the woman said, lest ye die. You, want, you see what happened? The woman watered down the words of God. God said, surely die. The devil said, not surely die. And the woman says, said, lest ye die. You see the problem? It's just questioning the word of God, adding on the word of God, and watered down the word of God. And the final one is that in Genesis chapter 3, verse number 5, it says, For God that know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil gods like Satan. He's the gods of this, he's the God of this world. And the word letter S, that means he is accompanied by other fallen beings. Now, in Genesis 3 5, in our uh, in our uh, background in this whiteboard, it says added statement of the serpent. He added verse number five on the conversation. He, he, just, he just told the woman, no, you're not going to die. You will become like gods, like us. That's the meaning of that. Now, ye shall be as gods. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 5. This is the insertion of secular education. They will know good and evil. You see that this is secular education. That is why, as you can see, these Bible versions contain so many secular knowledges. All right? These secular knowledges are uh, posed by the so-called professors, relying on Greek and Hebrews. All right? And the last one is, the result of this is so devastating. So devastating. It says man became sinners in God's eye and died spiritually. You see that? Uh, don't mess with the Word of God. Don't mess with the Word of God. Why? It will result to devastation. You know what happened to them when they tampered with the Word of God? They died spiritually. It's not disobedience. It's tampering on the Word of God. Not because they just disobeyed God's command in Genesis chapter 2 verse number 16. No. They tampered on the Word of God. And the, he questioned the Word of God. Alright? And the, the result is that suffering, sorrows, pains, etc. in chapter number 3 verse number 16. Now, what happened right now all around the world is because of people are messing with the Word of God. They tamper with the Word of God. That's why we have this COVID-19. Because pe people, they reject the preaching of the Word of God. So it's about time to understand the real issue. This is the first part of the preservation of the Word of God. The issue is not which one is preserved. The issue is, did God really keep His promise? Thank you once again for watching this video. And then the next video would, would follow.